In this video, we'll learn the elimination method for solving systems of linear equations. So let's start with a simple system that has two equations and two variables. You might already be familiar with what we call the substitution method. And in the substitution method, basically what we do is we pick one of the equations, we solve it for one of the variables, and then we take that solution and substitute it in to the other equations. So the easiest way to approach this system would be to take that first equation and solve it for x, to rewrite x as 10 minus 2y, and then take that solution for x and substitute it into the other equation. That gives us 0.5 times 10 minus 2y minus 3y equals negative 11. We distribute, we get 5 minus y minus 3y. So 5 minus 4y equals negative 11. Subtract 5 from both sides, and we get y equals 4. Then we take that solution for y equals 4 and plug it back into our equation for x. So x equals 10 minus 2 times 4. That's 10 minus 8, which is 2. So our solution here would be 2 comma 4. Remember that the first number in that ordered pair represents the first variable, which in this case is x, and the second number represents the second variable, which is y. But now when we look at a more complicated system of equations, here we have three equations and three variables. Here what we would have to do is take one of these equations, solve it for one of the variables, take that solution, substitute it into the other two equations. That would reduce us down to two equations and two variables, and then we'd have to use substitution again to get down to one variable. And then again, imagine extrapolating that to four equations, five equations, six equations. It's quickly going to get out of control in terms of how much we're going to have to keep track of to try to solve this by substitution. So because the substitution method doesn't really generalize well to more equations, we're going to try to find another method, another way to do this. So instead, we're going to use what's called the elimination method. In this method, we're going to perform operations on the entire equation itself and then use that to try to eliminate one of the variables. So our goal is to get a single variable by itself equaling a number. So one way that we can do this, and there are definitely different ways that we could approach this, is to take this second equation, multiply it by negative 2. When we multiply both sides by negative 2, we get minus x plus 6y equals positive 22. And then we're going to take the first equation together with this new equation and add those two equations together. Add the left-hand side, add the right-hand side. When we do that, the x and the minus x cancel out, and we get 8y equals 10 plus 22, which is 32. And now we take this latest equation, divide both sides by 8, and that's going to give us y equals 4, just like we found before. And now we can take that y equals 4 and plug it back into the one of the original equations. So we can take this back into, let's say, the first equation. Now that we know that y is equal to 4, this first equation looks like x plus 2 times 4 equals 10. That's x plus 8 equals 10, which gives us x equals 2. So again, we get the same solution that we got before, 2 comma 4, but using a different method. Notice that each of these steps creates a new equation. So one of the issues that we're going to have to deal with is trying to get a handle on having so many different equations to look at. So how do we deal with this problem of having too many equations? We're going to focus on replacing an equation by the result of doing one of these operations. So that if we started with two equations and two variables, we're going to always have two equations and two variables. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that each of the steps that we do is a reversible step, because we don't want to destroy any information. So for example, one of the things that we won't ever want to do to our equations is to, say, multiply both sides by zero. That would take the information in the equation and destroy it. It would take whatever that equation was telling us about the variables and replace it with just zero equals zero, which contains no information. So we always want to make sure that whatever step we do can be reversed so that we really are finding equations that are equivalent to the equations that we started with. So here are the operations that we're going to be allowed to do in the elimination process. So we can replace an equation by multiplying both sides by a non-zero constant. Remember, that's going to be a reversible operation because all we need to do is then divide by that non-zero constant, and that would get us back to the equation that we started with. This next one is a little bit tricky. Replace an equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation. 
So if we had, say, equation number 1, and we wanted to replace that with equation number 1 plus some multiple, let's say r, times equation number 2, why is that a reversible step? Well, this new equation 1 is equal to e1, the old e1, plus r e2. So all we would have to do is take that new e1 and replace it by equation 2 times minus r. That would cancel out the adding that we just did, and that would get us back to the original equation 1. So that step is reversible. And then finally, we can swap the positions of two equations. That's not something we're going to worry about too much for the moment, but that will be an important step that we'll have at our disposal a little later on. Okay, now how do we apply this method to this more complicated system? Here's the idea. We want to figure out how to get this, this system of equations into what we call triangular form. So the first equation is going to involve variables x1, x2, and x3. So it's going to be sum coefficient times x1 plus sum coefficient times x2 plus sum coefficient times x3 equals some number. And then the second equation is going to look like something times x2 plus something times x3 equals a number. So notice that there's no x1s in the second equation. And then the third equation is going to look like just something times x3 equals a number. So this is what we call triangular form. And we're going to generalize this triangular form a little bit later as we get deeper into the, uh, this topic. But notice that what we're going to be able to do once we have triangular form is we'll be able to take that third equation, divide both sides by whatever number is being multiplied by x3, and that tells us what x3 has to equal. Take that value for x3 and plug it into the second equation, and that'll let us figure out what x2 equals. Take those values of x2 and x3, plug those back into the first equation, and that will let us figure out what x1 is. So the triangular form is going to be what we're going to have our goal to be, which is going to allow us to figure out what the solution of this system of equations is. So how do we get there? Well, what we want to do then is get rid of these two pieces of the second and third equations. If we, if we can get rid of those pieces, then we're closer to our triangular form, because the only equation that we want to have x1s in it is the first equation. So how do we do that using our elimination operations? Well, what we're going to do is replace equation 2 by equation 2 plus negative 3 times equation 1. If we multiply both sides of equation 1 by negative 3, then we'll have a negative 3 in front of our x1. We add that to our 3x1, that'll cancel out. Similarly, we're going to want to replace equation 3 by equation 3 plus 4 times equation 1. Multiplying equation 1 by 4 puts a 4 in front of that x1. Adding that to the third equation, we'll have 4x1 minus 4x1. The x1s will cancel out, and we'll have achieved our goal of not having any x1s in the third equation. And we'll proceed in this way to try to eliminate the x2s out of the third equation until we're in that triangular form that we want. Now, performing all these operations with these equations is going to get pretty messy. So to avoid that, we're going to rewrite our system in what we call matrix form. So what we're going to do is take all of the coefficients of these equations and put them in a rectangular grid, which we surround by big square brackets. Now, some of these don't have visible coefficients, but that's okay. Because remember, x1 we can think of as just 1 times x1, and x3 we can think of as 1 times x3. So when we fill in just the coefficients now, we get 1, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 3, negative 7, 7, negative 8, negative 4, 6, negative 1, and 7. Because as long as we keep our equations lined up so that all of the x1s are in the first position, all of the x2s are in the second position, and all of the x3s are in the third position, and then the numbers on the other side of the equal sign, those are in the fourth position, then performing operations on these equations is just going to rearrange these numbers in this rectangular grid. This rectangular grid is called a matrix. And for the moment, 
It's just an organizational convenience. It's just a way to keep our work organized without having to write all the X's and the equal signs and the, and the pluses and the minuses. It's just going to make it easier for us to perform these operations. So thinking of matrices now, our elimination operations, instead of doing operations on equations, we're really doing operations on the rows of the matrix, the horizontal rows of the matrix. So we can replace a row by multiplying it by a non-zero constant. That's just simulating multiplying both sides of the equation by that non-zero constant. We can replace a row by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row. Again, that's just simulating replacing an equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation. And we can swap the positions of two rows, and again, that just simulates swapping the positions of two equations. So here's the matrix that we had gotten out of our system of equations that we were looking at earlier. So what we're going to do is use those row operations to get this into triangular form. And remember that what that means is we want to get rid of these numbers. We want to turn those numbers into zeros, because then we're going to have equations that are in that triangular form that we were looking for. So we're going to replace row 2 by row 2 plus negative 3 times row 1. So we usually do this all at once. So we think of negative 3 times row 1. Typically, we think of that in our heads, but we're going to make this a little bit easier by actually writing it out. Negative 3 times row 1 is going to be negative 3, positive 9, negative 12, positive 12. And then row 2 is 3, negative 7, 7, negative 8. So we're not actually changing row 1. Row 1 is staying as 1, negative 3, 4, negative 4. This operation is also not changing row 3. That's staying as 4, 6, negative 1, 7 for the moment. And now we're going to take those two rows that we have in our thought bubble and add those together. Negative 3 plus 3, that's 0. Negative 9 plus negative 7, that's 2. Negative 12 plus 7, that's negative 5. And 12 plus negative 8, that's 4. So notice that we've achieved one of the three things that we wanted. This 3, we wanted to turn it into a 0, and we've achieved that. Now let's work on turning this negative 4 into a 0. So we're going to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 4 times row 1. When we do that, again, typically we'll just do the, this in our heads, but I'll write it out this first couple of times. So 4 times row 1 is 4, negative 12, 16, negative 16. Row 3 is negative 4, 6, negative 1, 7. So when we add those together, we haven't changed row 1, we haven't changed row 2, and now we're changing row 3. So we're adding those two rows together. 4 plus negative 4 is 0, just like we wanted. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. 16 plus 1 is 15. And negative 16 plus 7 is negative 9. So now the only thing we have left to do is change that position into a 0. Now right now there's a negative 6 here. So what are we going to be able to do to change that negative 6 into a 0? Well, we're going to perform the row operation where we replace that row 3 by the sum of itself at a multiple of another row. And we're going to use either the negative 3 up here or the 2 to do that. Let's investigate the possibilities. So we might think possibility number 1 is replace row 3 by row 3 plus negative 2 times row 1, because you might think to yourself, well, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. A positive 6 will cancel out that negative 6. But when we do that, we'll destroy the work that we did putting a 0 in that position. Because if we take row 3 and replace it by negative 2 times row 1, we will no longer have a 0 in the bottom left-hand corner of this matrix. And so we won't really be making progress towards what we want. But the other possibility is to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 3 times row 2. Again, 3 times row 2 will give us a 6. 6 plus negative 6 is a 0, and that will cancel out just like we want. 
And because there's a zero in the middle position in the first column, that will not destroy the zero that we've worked to create in the lower left-hand corner. So it's the second possibility that's the one that we want. We don't want to use that first possibility because that's going to wreck the work that we already did. So replacing row three by row three plus three times row two, again, in our heads, we think to ourselves, all right, what's three times row two? That's going to be zero, six, negative 15, 12. And then row two is zero, negative six, 15, negative nine. And when we add those together, we haven't changed row one, we haven't changed row two, and we're replacing row three by the sum of those two rows. So zero plus zero is zero, six plus negative six is zero, negative 15 plus 15 is zero, and 12 plus negative nine is three. So let's think about what we have now. So we've created our triangular form. So what does this actually tell us about this system of equations? Well, what we have now is the first row corresponds to the equation x1 minus 3x2 plus 4x3 equals negative 4. The second row corresponds to the equation 2 times x2 minus 5 times x3 equals 4. And the last equation corresponds to 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3, so that's just 0, equals 3. Now 0 doesn't equal 3, so that means that this, this system of equations has no solution. We wouldn't have known that without going through this whole process of trying to solve it, but it turns out that this system of equations actually doesn't have a solution because we got 0 equals 3. Let's do another example. So again, we've got a system of three equations and three variables, which gives us a matrix that has three rows and four columns. There's one more column than there is variable because the last column corresponds to the number that's on the other side of the equal sign. So again, our goal is to get this into triangular form, which means we want zeros in these three positions. We want all of these numbers to be zero. Now, one of them is already a zero, which is great. That just means we have less work to do. So the first thing we need to work on is getting that negative 1 to be a 0. So you want to try to use the other numbers in the same column as the number that you want to be a 0 to turn it into a 0. And so the 0 that's underneath that negative 1, that's not going to help. But the 1 that's above it, that is going to help. And so we're going to replace row 2 here by row 2 plus 1 times row 1. We don't have to multiply row 1 by anything to get that to work out. Now, that doesn't change row 1. It doesn't change row 3. It does change row 2. So when we add those two rows together, 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. And now we've got one more thing to do. We've got to turn this position into a 0. So again, we want to use the numbers that are in the same column, but we also don't want to wreck the zeros that we've gotten in the uh, first column. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need to use this negative 2 to turn this 1 into a 0. So the way that we're going to make that happen is to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 1 half times row 2. Multiplying by 1 half is going to turn that negative 2 into a negative 1, and then when we add, we'll get a 0. So the result of doing that doesn't change row 1. That's still 1, negative 3, 0, 5. It doesn't change row 2, 0, negative 2, 5, 7. It is going to change row 3. So a half times negative 2 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. A half times 5 is 5 halves, plus 1 is 7 halves. And a half times 7 is 7 halves, plus 0 is 7 halves. And so again, our matrix is in this triangular form that we want. Now, what equations does this actually correspond to? Well, the first row is going to correspond to the equation x1 minus 3x2 plus 0x3. So we don't have to write that, but I'm just writing it for clarity. Equals 5. 
The second row corresponds to the equation negative 2x2 plus 5x3 equals 7. And the last equation corresponds to 7 halves x3 equals 7 halves. Well, that last equation, if we divide both sides by 7 halves, or multiply both sides by 2 sevenths, if you like, that's going to tell us that x3 equals 1. Plugging that into the second equation gives us negative 2x2 plus 5 times 1 equals 7. That's going to give us that x2 equals negative 1. And then finally, plugging that value into the first equation is going to tell us that x1 equals so x1 plus 3 equals 5, so x1 equals 2. And so that would be our solution to this system of equations. So the one we did before didn't have any solutions. This one does have a solution. x1 equals 2, x2 equals negative 1, and x3 equals 1. And we could also write that in the ordered notation 2, negative 1, 1. So we're going to get lots of practice with this elimination method, but here's a, the first couple of examples they show you some of the different possibilities. Sometimes we do get a solution, sometimes we don't get a solution, but the main goal is to try to get it into that triangular form.